The problem was how to give his fellow Athenians the say in their future that he knew they must now have. On an Athenian hillside, he had a great meeting place carved out from the bare rock. Here, in the shadow of the Acropolis, the citizens of Athens could now gather to discuss the future of their state. On these very steps, rich and poor alike could stand and address their fellow citizens. This is the ancestor of the British House of Commons, the American Congress of Parliaments across the world. And where government had once been decided by the strength of a sword arm or the thrust of a sharpened spear, Cleisthenes instituted the simple vote. A white pebble for yes, a black pebble for no. And with this elegant and simple idea, Cleisthenes instituted the rule of the people, a system of government which we now know as democracy. The great Athenian assembly would gather every nine days to vote on issues covering the entire administration of the state, from the raising of taxes to the building of roads, from the price of figs to the declaration of war. Athenian democracy is a very different sort of democracy from ours. One has a sense, as an Athenian citizen, that you really can make a difference. There is no us and them. There is no government separate from the ordinary Athenian citizen body. They are the government. Democracy represented a sharp break. An originally elitist, heroic culture was now turned on its head, and the idea was that even ordinary Greeks who weren't aristocratic, who were not rich, could be, as it were, heroes in politics. It was a system of government that would transform this tiny state and would set off one of the greatest flowerings of civilization the world had ever seen. It's not just an accident that you had democracy and you had this tremendous flourishing of culture. I think that democracy really does, in a very real way, unleash, make possible potentials within human societies that are very unlikely to be unleashed, to be made actual in any other way.